Do you want to save time studying and maximize your performance at exams and tests? The way you're thinking about learning might even be fundamentally wrong. Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Alex, and on this channel, we focus on human performance to help you live healthier, wealthier, happier, and more productive lives. Now, when I studied medicine and then worked as a surgeon, I had to sit lots of written exams and consume a huge amount of technical information. For surgery, this involved learning anatomy, physiology, and engineering principles around my actual job as a surgeon. I then had to sit written exams as well as spoken exams where you had to recall information and apply knowledge in front of an actual examiner. Oh, and surgical exams cost a heck of a lot of money just to add more pressure and stress to the situation. Now, when you get to university and medical school, no one really tells you how to revise or study and you're left to your own devices. I remember reading and highlighting medical textbooks in the library during my first year for hours and hours without really embedding or understanding what I was passively reading. What's more, this takes a huge amount of time and it just isn't very effective. After failing an exam in my first year at med school using this method, I completely switched up how I learned by using a method known as active recall. In today's video, we're gonna look at some key evidence-based learning tips Specifically, we're going to cover what active recall is, why research shows it to be the most effective way of learning, how active recall can reduce test-related stress, and how you can start using active recall now to learn anything. Active recall, retrieval practice, or the testing effect is the process of actively recalling or applying knowledge either for practice or as a test. Retrieval practice can be considered as an alternative learning method to other options such as rereading, highlighting, or note-taking. Rereading, highlighting, and writing long notes gets us comfortable with the material we're studying and convinces us that we're mastering it. In reality, this is often an illusion known as the fluency effect, which causes us to mistake fluency with mastery, meaning that we may understand something on the surface, but don't yet have the deeper knowledge required to actually apply it in practice. In terms of learning, passive methods such as reading or highlighting put the information into short-term memory, but unless we're applying it or are tested to recall the knowledge, it's not stored in our long-term memory. The best way to put information into your long-term memory is to actively retrieve it. The act of retrieving information and data from our brains not only strengthens our ability to retain information, but also improves the connections in our brains between different concepts. Testing your knowledge also provides a diagnostic step to help you first identify knowledge gaps and topics you're unsure about. The earliest research into testing and active recall can be traced back to an experiment from 1909 that demonstrated that recitation via a test of a word list was a potent factor in learning. More recently, a literature review from Kent State and Duke Universities in 2013 analyzed hundreds of separate studies about effective revision techniques and concluded that testing or active recall has high utility and can be implemented effectively with minimal training. Researchers quoted, on the basis of the evidence, we rate practice testing as having a high utility. Testing effects have been demonstrated across an impressive range of practice test formats, kinds of material, learner ages, outcome measures, and retention intervals. Thus, practice testing has broad applicability. This study also concluded that active recall is better than mind mapping and note taking since it is extremely efficient for committing details and ideas into one's memory. Psychology professor Jeffrey Karpik at Purdue University has been involved in a number of high profile studies into active recall and testing. In his 2011 study, researchers split 80 students into four groups with each student tasked with learning the same material before being tested on what they learned. Each group was given different instructions and parameters for learning the content. The first group were asked to read the material only once. The second group would read the material four times. The third group would read the material, then were told to make a mind map called concept mapping. The fourth group would read the material once and then recall as much as possible called retrieval practice. In both the verbatim test when asked to recall facts, as well as the inference test when asked to recall concepts, the active recall group significantly outperformed the other groups. This study shows that testing yourself just once is much more effective and meaningful than rereading a chapter of a book four times. So if retrieval practice is such a potent learning strategy, you would hope that many learners would practice retrieval to learn many different things in many different situations. However, active recall is not typically considered an important part of the learning process. 
And unfortunately, many learners do not practice active recall as often or as effectively as they could. At the end of the learning phase in the same experiment, the student's metacognitive knowledge of the effectiveness of these learning activities was also assessed by researchers. Students were asked to make judgments about how they learned and its effectiveness. After completing the learning phase, students were asked to predict the percentage of information from the materials they would remember in one week. As you can see from the results, the study showed learners predicted that repeated study and rereading would yield the best results and active recall the least beneficial results. This shows that we overestimate the value of simply reading something and undervalue testing and active recall. Now, learning can be stressful, as can exams. More than a decade of research has supported a robust consensus. Acute stress impairs memory retrieval. A 2016 study by Smith et al aimed to determine whether active recall could strengthen memory against the negative effects of stress. Participants first learned stimuli by either restudying or engaging in retrieval practice. 24 hours later, researchers induced stress in half of the participants and assessed subsequent memory performance. Participants who learned by restudying demonstrated the typical stress-related memory impairment, whereas those who'd learned by retrieval practice were immune to the effects of stress. These results show that active recall can help protect against test-related stress and anxiety. It seems obvious, but being prepared and having been exposed to stress ahead of a stressful event will make the actual event much more manageable. In performance coaching, this is similar to visualization and practicing under pressure ahead of the real thing. At my company, Verti, an early study we did back in 2019 showed that doctors who practiced infrequent but hazardous events, such as managing an acutely unwell patient in virtual reality, led to doctors feeling more prepared ahead of real life on-call periods and experiencing reduced levels of work-related anxiety. On the background of this evidence, when learning anything, it's vital that you test yourself regularly when studying. Combining active recall with spaced repetition has been shown to deliver the best results in terms of memory retention and spacing out your test periods gives the longest lasting results. Now I'll cover spaced repetition in the next video in the evidence-based learning series in detail. But for now, it's important simply to understand that retesting yourself at set intervals will give you the best results in terms of memory retention and recall. So let's look at some practical ways you can move away from passive methods of learning and get the most out of your study time. The first method is closing your book. While reading a book, try to close the book or hide certain chapters or concepts and try to recall or work out the answer yourself before revealing the correct answer. This will help to make your reading much more active. After reading a chapter or a paragraph, I used to routinely try to recall in my head the key principles or learning points. I would then write these down as notes as best I could remember. If I was unable to, I'd look back over the chapter or paragraph and go again until I was happy I could remember without the book or prompts. Next, use practice tests under time conditions. It might seem counterintuitive, but jumping straight into exam conditions can help you to recall information much more effectively and reduce stress in the real test. Don't worry about failure and rather see every incorrect answer as a way to learn something new and identify which areas you are weakest at. Some online exam question banks allow you to filter questions by subject and topic area. And so you can read a chapter and then immediately test your knowledge of that topic area in a focused way. Equally, language learning apps like Duolingo challenge you immediately rather than asking you to read or highlight text. Next, ask a study partner to quiz you. Asking a revision partner to select questions from a text can help make learning more social as well as testing your active recall. This method helps to make learning much more fun as you challenge each other. And when someone gets a question incorrect, the process of the other person teaching will help to further embed that knowledge. Finally, create your own questions or revision materials. Whether by hand or using digital tools, creating your own quizzes and note cards for use alone or with others can help you to test your knowledge while also thinking about key principles you need to learn. Online systems such as Kahoot, Shikan and Anki allow you to create your own flashcards and store them. Writing out flashcards from notes and then returning to them can also be beneficial. So why don't you give it a go and let me know how you get on in the comments below. If you enjoyed today's video, we've added in some links to other videos you might find useful. And if you have any suggestions for future topics you'd like to see covered, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next time.